Hey guys, I'm Phil in the Blanks, and welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man The Wily Wars. Uh, last time we beat Bomb Man and Guts Man, got the hyper, uh, uh, sorry, the super arm from Guts Man. So we're gonna go on to Cut Man stage. And, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong here, but I think, I think Cut Man stage might be the most iconic. At least in the first Mega Man. And the reason I say this is, uh, cause at the time when Mega Man was released, in, uh, 87 I think, uh, not a lot of level, uh, not a lot of games had a, like a level select screen, um, so I don't think anyone was suspect uh, expecting that when they played Mega Man. And the cursor on the the level select screen is actually defaulted on on Cut Man, so I think a lot of people just kind of press start and thought they were just you know choosing a character maybe or I don't know. But uh, I think most people just started out with Cut Man stage, making it usually the first stage that anyone who's played a Mega Man game has played. I'm actually not sure um, what level my first level for a Mega Man for for this Mega Man game was. I have no idea because Mega Man um, was not the first Mega Man game I have played. I played Mega Man Two and Mega Man Three, and I think even Mega Man Four before this one. Uh, I do remember that in Mega Man Two, my, my very first level was Flash Man um, that I ever played. I have no idea who I beat first, but Flash Man was the first one I ever tried. But for uh, Mega Man 1, this one here, uh, this was, I think, the last game I played of the original series. At least through 1 through 6, not counting like the Game Boy games, the spin-offs. Um, and I think the reason why is because I've never actually played this game on its original cartridge in its original form. Uh, the first time I played it, I think anyways, the first time I played it was, pro well, probably emulator. But the first time I played it on an actual console was... Uh, uh, the Mega Man Collection. I got it for the PS2 back in uh, 2004. And until then, uh, I, I never really had a chance to sit down and really kind of appreciate this game. And even even now, I've never played the original cartridge uh, NES version of this game. It's either the, the collection version or, uh, or this version. Uh, I'm a bit of a collector, and I, I do have 2 through 6 for the NES and 1 through 5 for the Game Boy. Um... Uh, but I, I have never found a physical copy of Mega Man 1. And I'm still looking. And I could go on eBay or whatever, but they're always charging way too much money for a game that I pretty much already have twice over. Alright, so we got the super arm going, and we got the, these blocks right down here. Oh my god. Uh, and there's only two of them, so I gotta really make good use of them. Because two hits will kill Cut Man. And that was stupid. Oh well, I can still take him out. Um, the trajectory that you throw the blocks at is a little different from the original NES version. Uh, I think the original NES version, they just kind of go up, and they don't come back down, but they'll split if they hit anything. But in this one, they seem to come down, and it's, it's a little weird. <laughs> oh well, Cutman's just about dead. And there we go. And there's Cutman. I think those are the two most uh, recognized Robot Masters from Mega Man, uh, Cut Man and Guts Man. I think because of the uh, the awful, awful TV show back in the early to mid-90s. Does anyone else remember that show? It was on at like 6 in the morning, at least where I was. Uh, which was frustrating because I hated getting up early just to watch this kind of awful show. Uh, but it was pretty good. I mean, I liked it when I was a kid. It was weird though because Mega Man was like... A teenager, and so was Roll, and they looked way too old. Oh, well, it was a good show, though. So we're in a Lech Man stage, and I forget the name of the song, but this is pretty much a copy of a song by Journey. I mean, listen to it. I'll, 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 like, right, right here. It's a song by Journey. It's hilarious how close it is. Wow, I'm taking forever to get up here. Oh, come on. There we go. Now, just like I said with Gutman's uh, weapons trajectory, uh, the rolling cutter moves a lot differently than I'm used to too, which is why I'm, I'm having trouble hitting these guys. In the original NES version, that's not like, that's not how the uh, rolling cutter moves. It's just slightly different, but when you get used to something in a game, just the slightest difference will, really, uh, difference will really throw you off, which is what's happening right now with me. 
So this is the uh, first... Oh, wait, I'm full. Never mind. <laughs> this is the first uh, vertical stage in any Mega Man game. I think it's the only one in uh, this one. At least, like, kind of, like, as much as, as this one is. Because there's some vertical segments in some of the other levels. Uh, Mega Man 2 was the second one to kind of have a really, really vertical level with Quick Man stage, uh, which was awesome. I love Quick Man stage. I like the background, though. It's nice. Uh, big improvement over the NES version. Uh, Mega Man 1, just huge improvement graphically. Uh, I'll go to the left side. One of the reasons why I took the stage order in, in the way I did uh, is because I don't want to go through a like man stage twice. And what I mean by that is there is a, an item in the stage that is required to get. At least I think it is. I'm pretty sure you can't get through the game without it. I've never tried. Uh, and you need Gutman's weapon in order to get it, which I think is not a bad idea. I mean, other games have done that too, but um, it's silly in a Mega Man game to require you to go in the stage with what you need, like with, with a weapon that you're not sure if you're going to need or not. And here it is, to get the Magnet Beam. Uh, I think it's cool that there's hidden items. I mean, this is the first Mega Man game, and the only Mega Man game until Mega Man 4, that you can re-enter stages. Uh, I just think, it, it, <clears throat> if you're going to be forced to go through an older level, it should be like a an optional thing, not, not something that's required. There we go. So you can use the Rolling Cutter and... Uh, hyper Bomb to take care of those guys. You can also use uh, Elect Beam, but obviously I don't have it because I'm at Elect Man stage. Darn it. Well, that wasn't too bad. I'm going to switch back. I just don't want to use too much uh, frig, too much of um, the Rolling Cutter because it is Elect Man's weakness and I definitely want to use it because Elect Man is brutally difficult without it. And I mean like, holy nuts. Uh, I'm not sure if they changed how powerful you are in this game, or how powerful he is in this game, compared to the original NES version, but in the original version, he can kill you in three hits. So, I don't want any of that crap. Oh, great, this guy. Ooh, that was close. I'm kind of hoping... Okay, never mind. I was kind of hoping that he'd give me a, a, some, <laughs> some life, but I'm not going to risk it. I might die here, just because... Cut man does so, or Elect Man does so much damage. I think I can survive. I can, I can take two hits and then I'll die after two hits. But if, I'm pretty sure the Rolling Cutter is so powerful against him that only three hits will kill him. So hopefully I'll hit him. I'm not sure because I'm not used to the way Rolling Cutter acts in this game. It goes too high. Like that. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Damn it. If I had gotten that first hit on him. Oh, well. Not a big deal. I have seen people beat Elect Man without his, his weakness, and that's just... Holy crap, Capcom. Really? Like, all the other ones, they're, they're not too difficult. Uh, Fireman being kind of difficult because he just moves around so much. But Elect Man? Holy frig, Capcom. Why did you make him so flippin' powerful? But oh well, whatever. There we go. Alright, so I'm not going to shoot him right at first, because I know he's going to just going to... Well, no, screw it. There we go, good, I'm glad that hit him. Oh, jeez. So it's actually better to get hit by Elect Man than his Elect Beam, because the Beam just takes so much damage off of you. Holy crap. All right, we got the Elect Beam. Woo! In the original NES version, the Elect Beam could be used to, uh, could be abused a little bit to to make two bosses super, super easy. I actually don't think it's possible to do that in this version, which is okay, because I'm okay with not doing that. So, two more to go. We're going to go into Iceman, and then we'll call it an episode. I love how Iceman is just a guy in a parka. Like, really? <laughs> that's That's Iceman. The first robot master in the Mega Man series to have ice power, and it's just this like cute little Inuit guy. Oh well, the robot master designs are kind of boring in the first Mega Man game. I mean, other than I think Fireman, 
uh, looks the best out of the originals. He looks really interesting how he's got like, I don't know, it's hard to explain, I don't know, he, he had, instead of arms, he or uh, instead of hands, he's got like the two fire cannons, and I don't know, he, he's definitely the most interesting looking out of the bunch. And here we have the, uh, first we're going to get rid of this guy, because, uh, stupid new cutter, there we go. First instance of these disappearing blocks in a Mega Man game. Uh, not too difficult. I actually think they last a little bit longer in this one than they do in the original. Oops. Kind of forget how they go, though. Nope, nothing over there. Okay, I need to remember how to do this. And then I gotta remember not to fall. Take care of this guy. Uh, take care of this guy just in case I fall again. Oh, you know what? I'm being stupid. I'm apparently not very good at using that, though. Wow, that was... There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's cheap to do that, but whatever. And I really hate this area, so I'm going to do this and be super cheap. Because I find these guys just, they move, well, there you go. <laughs> they move so erratically. <laughs>